In this tutorial, we're going to download and install the Java EE SDK in our development environment. So I am recording this from my Linux laptop. Um, I have JDK set up, uh, but we're gonna be downloading and installing Java EE SDK. Um, before we start, there are a couple of checks that we'll have to do to make sure JDK is fine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the command prompt and type Java dash version. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking if Java is in the path and I'm also checking the version of the JDK. So I need to have JDK 1.7 to actually install Java E 7. So make sure you have JDK 1.7. If you have 1.6 or lower, uh, make sure you download and install the latest JDK. After you do this, also make sure that your Java home is set. So I do an echo. Java home. So Java home should be pointing to the JDK 1.7 directory, right? So this is the same procedure, you know, you know, even in different operating systems on Windows or Mac, uh, make sure that these two are fine. Once we have checked for these two, we are all set to install Java E SDK. So we're gonna go to the Oracle website and uh, navigate to the Java Enterprise Edition download. So go to the Downloads tab, and uh, you can choose this one, Java E7 SDK. I accept the license agreement here. So I'm gonna download the installer for Linux. So depending on your operating system, choose the file that you need to download. I'm going to save this and wait for the download to complete. Once the download is complete, we are all set to run the installer. In Linux, an additional step that we'll have to do is make this an executable file because uh, by default, when you download something, it'll not be executable. So go to permissions and choose allow executing as a program, right? So we're setting the um, attribute to make it an executable. So now I'm gonna run the installer. So I'll switch to my downloads directory and start the installer. And we see a wizard. So I go for a typical installation. Now it's asking you to choose the directory where the Glassfish server will be installed. Now Glassfish server is an open source application server that comes with the Java E SDK. And this is the server that we're gonna use to test our Java E applications. So we're gonna install it. I'm gonna choose the Java directory to install the Glassfish server. And notice that the version is four. So Glassfish four, is, uh, supports the Java E7 release. So we're gonna install Glassfish 4 here. Hit next. It's asking me if you want to install the update tool. The update tool is basically something that uh, updates the Glassfish server when there is a new release. So I'm gonna install it here. And um, notice the steps over here. So it installs the update tool, installs the JDK. I already have the JDK, so it's not an issue. Uh, it installs the Glassfish server, it installs the uninstallation software, then it configures the update tool bootstrap, and then it also configures the Glassfish server. We'll look at what that configuring is in just a minute. Okay, so I skipped through a little bit of the installation process. So now it's almost done with the installation, and now it's actually configuring the Glassfish install. So basically what it does is it creates what's called as a domain. So there is a default domain created called domain one. And uh, the domain one is, uh, any domain is kind of like a container where you can uh, deploy your web applications. So it's created this domain called domain one, and it's actually starting the domain. Okay, so now it's done. It's configured everything. And notice that the admin port here is 4848. So just make a note of this. We'll, we'll take a look at what that is in a minute. So now it says command start domain has executed successfully. So it's 
created a domain called domain1 and it has already started it. So Glassfish server should be up and running. Now I hit next. Now it's the overall summary and I exit. Okay, so now since Glassfish server is up and running, we should be able to access the admin console of the Glassfish server. You remember that the that the installer said that the admin port was 4848. So basically that's the port in which we access the admin page. So to access the admin page, I do HTTP localhost colon 4848. This should open up the Glassfish server administration console. Okay, so now the console has loaded. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do here to customize our installation and uh, to also deploy new applications. I'll just quickly walk through what it takes to deploy a standard Java web application. So let's say you have a war that you want to deploy on your Glassfish server. So the way to do it is, there are actually multiple ways to do it. Uh, the way to do it using this GUI, using this admin console, is to go to this applications link over here. And here you have a deploy. So you just click on that. And now you can actually choose the war that you want to pick. So you just go to your file system, choose the war and click open. And you can choose the type, if it's a web application or an enterprise application, and all this other stuff. And then you hit okay, then the Glassfish server is gonna install, I mean, it's gonna deploy the war and uh, the web application should be accessible after that uh, in the 8080 port, which is the standard port that you can access any web application in. One other thing we need to know is to start and stop the Glassfish application server. In order to do that, we will navigate to the directory where we have installed Glassfish server in. So it's in Java Glassfish in my machine. So here you have the Glassfish installation. So you have a bin directory, go to that. And uh, there's this utility called AS admin. So the AS admin is used to start and stop the server. And the command is AS admin start domain and you have to give the domain name we know that the default domain that the installer created was domain one but since there's only one domain it's the default so you don't have to specify it so you just do a start domain so now that it's already started so it says that there's already a process that's running so it errors out but in order to stop this all you need to do is issue the stop domain command this will stop the Glassfish server. So now if I access this, it should error out. See here, now the server is stopped. You won't be able to access the admin console. But now we can start it again by using the start domain command. And there you go, the server is up now. So in this tutorial, we downloaded and installed the Glassfish application server we configured the domain, well, at least the installer configured the domain by default. We learned how to deploy a war in using the admin console. And we also learned how to start and stop the Glassfish server using the AS admin utility. In the next tutorial, we're gonna start writing some code and deploying it on the server. Thanks for watching.